In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, praise and blessings of Almighty God be on the seal of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions and all those that follow his footsteps from now until the day of recompense. My name is Dr. Abu Adam and I welcome you once again to our series of understanding government economy policy making. In today's lesson, inshallah, we're going to look at the GDP growth rate. We're also going to look at the potential GDP growth. If you could recall, in our previous lesson, we've already understood where GDP comes from. We've seen how to extract every component or each component of the GDP from the circular flow diagram. In today's lesson, we're going to look at different countries' GDP's growth rate. We will first of all, today, use our first data tool where we're going to go all together and extract data from. We're going to extract our first data of GDP growth rate and show you how to extract your own country's data from the Google public data. I'm going to leave a link for you to be able to make use of, of this particular tool in order to check your country's GDP growth rate as you carry along this course. So pay attention to every single uh, tool we're going to make use of because you will need this tool in order to make sense of all the economic data that you see around, that you come around uh, in your day-to-day -day, uh, you know, research about data or economic data. So without delay or wasting much of your time, I'll take you straight to my screen where I'm gonna show you uh, the GDP growth rate data from Google public data of at least five to six countries. Here in front of you is the Google public data. In this Google public data, you can extract data of different countries. Uh, right here before you have extracted data of about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight countries. China, United States, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, Greece, Germany, United Kingdom, and Japan. <clears throat> and this data is from the period of, uh, from, from, from 1960 up to today, or up to 2018, like latest of 2018. Uh, we can go back to 1960s and see how all these economies of these eight countries that I have extracted are doing. Look at right from 1960s. Look at, look at, look at, let, let me take my country, Nigeria, for example. I'm just highlighting Nigeria. The growth of Nigeria as of 2018 is 1.94. But how has Nigeria been doing before that time? Has Nigerian growth rate been high or low. So look at Nigeria here in 1960s, early 60s, we're growing around 8% or two, almost 10%. And then we continue to grow almost off to 25%. Okay, then we come down uh, and then we continue to go up and down. And this is the business cycle. This is how we go up and down, up and down in the business cycle. And this is Nigeria for you. And look at back in 20, uh, 2015, check Nigeria, back in 2016, we, we plummeted in 2016. Let me get back to 2015. Before this administration, let's, let's get back before this administration, okay? This is before this administration. Nigeria was growing at 6.31 in 2014. Okay, 2015, we start to plummet, plummet, plummet. Let me get Nigeria. Okay. Okay, this is Nigeria. Okay, 2.65. That's how we ended 2015, 2.55. But 2014, this is where we are. This is how we ended 2014 with around 6.81 growth in the economy. So this is what regards to 
data. You can see different countries. You can see if your country is not here, please uh, pardon me. Uh, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. This is Saudi Arabia, for example. This is United States. And this is China. One interesting thing before we go is China. Look at China in the 60s. China is below 30, almost 28%, 27%, negative 27%. But look at Chinese economy. Look at how the Chinese economy has been so and so and so and so and so stable. There's China. Look at how Chinese economy has been so stable. Okay. So the Chinese economy has been so and so stable. So this is China for you. All right. Uh, and then we, 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 we're going to look at uh, this growth rate. What does it mean when you hear the word GDP growth rate? Uh, the word GDP growth rate means GDP adjusted for inflation. GDP adjusted for inflation. I believe most of our economic students are familiar with the word GDP growth rate. It means GDP adjusted for inflation. So wherever you see any, any, in any outlet or any magazine or any data outlet or any, any, any statistical outlet where you see GDP growth rate, that GDP has been adjusted for inflation. And what does that mean? It means that we're taking the prices of goods and services, let's say in the second year, and then adjust them to be the same as the same prices of goods and services or the same goods and services or the prices of goods and services in the first year. So, so that we eliminate all sense of inflation. So that's what uh, GDP growth rate means. So you can see how different economies have grown. One thing I didn't show you is when you get in here, how do you how do you get in get this data, for example? We can, you can see from my uh, left hand side, you can see different countries and different uh, indicators here adjusted net national income, because PPP conversion factors, all these are uh, different things that you can you can just come down here, different different economy. Okay, I can clear all this section, right? Okay, I'm clearing all the sections and I'm going to go and just pick one country uh, using this data. For example, I can pick only Nigeria in this data. So let me, let me just pick Nigeria. Let's say we want to analyze Nigeria. We just pick Nigeria, you see, only Nigeria appear here. So you can go around go around and play with the data, play how Nigeria work, how the Nigerian economy grows or in and out and things like that. You just play with the data, like just pick only Nigeria. Okay, I only pick Nigeria. All right, this is Nigeria, but you only pick Nigeria. So you can do the same for any country uh, of your choice and play with the data. To answer this question, what's our potential GDP and how much should we grow? What does that do to you, to the economy? High growth, when you are growing too fast, then you'll be dealing with inflation problems. If you're growing too slow, you'll be dealing with unemployment problems. And this is why in trying to get our potential GDP means the, the, the right level at which we should grow as an economy, then these two factors are so important. These two indicators will give us the rate at which our economy should grow. And these two indicators are number one, the productivity growth, the productivity growth. You take the productivity growth of your own economy, which is how much is your economy growing in terms of production, in terms of ease of doing business, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, investment in education, for instance, in terms of, uh, uh, serene environment for investors to come and invest in that kind of economy. You, you take that, for example, the productivity growth rate, productivity growth rate, and you take the labor force growth rate. What is the labor force growth rate? The labor force growth rate is the number of people within the labor force, the growing number of people, the, the rate at which the labor force is growing. When we talk about labor force, 
people within the economy that are actively working or actively looking for jobs, but they don't have a job. So they are considered labor force. The total are considered the labor force. Now, you bring these two rates together, the labor force growth and productivity growth together, and you will have your own potential GDP growth, at which that's the normal rate at which your economy should be uh, growing. If you grow faster than that, then you will be faced with an inflation problem. If you grow slower than that, then you will be faced with uh, an uh, a unemployment problem. So these are the two things you should put at the back of your mind. And that's why, without wasting much of your time, I'm going to take you to the OEC, uh, OECD uh, data, although Nigeria is not uh, one of those countries that the data is available in, in, uh, in, in, that, uh, in that particular OECD. But you will have at a glance, we're going to make use of some countries that their economy is there. And then we come back to the global public data and try to compare, try to compare the data that we match from the productivity and the labor force growth to see if the economy of that country is stable or the economy of that country is growing faster or is going, growing slow. So without delay, let me take you back to the data pool. I'm gonna take only United States. I'm taking on the United States here, okay? So uh, I'm taking on the United States. All right, the growth of the United States as of 2018 uh, is around 2.93%. So let me go to the OECD. Uh, now this is the OECD data. And I'm gonna pick on United States here for the sake of demonstration. This is United States. And this is the productivity growth of United States, labor force, labor productivity growth rate of United States. You take 2.6 level uh, productivity growth of the United States. And then I take multi-factor productivity of United States, the same United States, this is 2.6, and then take multi-factor productivity of United States. Now, let me look for United States. This is United Kingdom, and this is United States. This is 3.37, 0 0.37. This is the productivity growth of United States. You take 0 0.37 plus 2.6, and you have 2.9, 2.97, around 2.97. But remember, we're taking 2018 data in the Google public data. So let's go back to Google public data. You have 2.0.87 here. And then here you have uh, uh, label productivity. Let me take on label productivity. This is the label productivity of the United States. In label productivity in the United States, you have a uh, you have 2.6, 2.6 plus 3.37, uh, you have uh, 2.97. So you go back, you go back to United States here and you see 2.93. So the growth rate of United States is around that level, which is 2.93. That's at the rate which the country is stable, 2.97, then 2.97, that's the potential growth. And we say, this is now 2.93, then they are below their full potential by just 0.4. So this is the rate at which the United States should be growing by 2.97. That's the, that's, the, that's the potential GDP growth rate of the United States of America. So this is how to understand the growth rate of uh, particular potential growth rate of a particular economy. 
by taking the labor force growth and the productivity growth and you bring them together and you will get your potential GDP. If you go higher than that, your GDP growth rate is higher than that number, then you will be faced with uh, uh, inflation problem. If it's lower than that number, then you will be faced with uh, uh, unemployment uh, problem. You don't want to grow too fast and you don't want to grow too slow to face unemployment problem. You don't want to grow too fast to face uh, inflation problem. This brings us to the end of today's lesson on potential GDP growth. Every country should grow at its full potential and that will eliminate inflation to a barest minimum or acceptable level and unemployment to an acceptable level. Thank you so much for joining us. Meet us in the next lesson. God's willing, where you will continue to gain a lot of insight into understanding government economic policy making. With this, I come to the end of today's lesson. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.